Hey, thank you for joining me. So way back in 2013, Daniel Huffman shared that he used an open source 3D software package called Blender to do the hill shading for his maps and his cartography. And he would layer that into his cartography with blend modes. Well, it's gorgeous work. And um, it like rolled over the map making world like a like something that rolls. And sometime later, Scott Reinhard took that concept and he applied it to geo-referenced vintage topo quads. So USGS topo quads or geology maps. So vintage, papery, beautiful maps. And he would overlay the hill shade from Blender on top of those maps and give them kind of new 3D modern digital life. And it was this beautiful old and new um, modeling that was happening and it was beautiful. Now everybody's everybody's doing that and they're selling posters of it and stuff. Um, Sean Conway is just dug right in and makes a million of these things and they're beautiful and he tries different things. So it's a, it's a fun community that I'm not a part of. I'm not a part of this community. I've never made one of these maps before, but I've thought about it a little bit. I'm jealous and I want to try it. And ArcGIS Pro has blend modes now and so this I thought is like okay no more excuses let's try this and so I'm gonna give it a shot well first things first I've googled topo quad maps and there's just loads of results I like to go to the image tab see what's going and this one looks pretty good plus it's in um, Wikipedia so I'll visit this check it out it's the upper eastern portion of New York Adirondack Mountains. This might be a good candidate. Also, it's in the public domain, which of course is very helpful. I'll zoom in on this. Um, there's a lot to like about this. It was printed in 1902, engraved in 1894, based on surveys done in 1891 and two. <laughs> That's <laughs> so great. Um, the datum is mean sea level. So we'll, uh, we'll dig into that in a little bit. But check this out. Here's another thing that I love. The neat line is blown out, stepped on. Step on the neat line. Whoever was working on this, Henry Garnett, said, you know, we've got this Adirondack Mountain Reserve here and it's just gonna get clipped. Let's just show the whole reserve here because somebody's going to want to see that. Why make them grab another topo sheet? Isn't that cool? Thank you for doing that. I love it. Love that kind of charm and prowess in map making. I'm going to save this. I'll save this image as and I'll put it into a data folder that I've got rolling for this. Topo quad. I'll save this. Now this is just a JPEG. What now? Well, here we are in ArcGIS Pro. It's time to geo-reference this vintage topo quad. Geo-reference? What the deuce is that? Geo-referencing is magic. You breathe spatial life into an image. Push it and pull it, pin it, align it to where it belongs geographically, and an old map becomes plastered onto new geographic coordinates, and you can do cool stuff with it like you would with any other GIS layer. Okay, let's let's do this. So the first step that'll make our lives a lot easier is to pick a projected coordinate system that match that best matches the image that we're trying to georeference. So here's my image. Drop it right there. And Pro says, "Hey, heads up. By the way, this image that you just added has no spatial information associated with it, which is which is really cool of Pro to tell me that." Yes, I know. I'm going to turn this off for now. Let's define the projection of this map. So the coordinate systems tab, I mean by default I've got this, but um, I was told by Dr. Boyan Shaurich and company, the geodesists at Esri, that it's likely that the 1902 printing of a USGS topo quad is using a local state plane projection. This happens to be in Northeast New York. Um, and so I'll just, I'll look for state plane, state plane. And there are loads of them. I'll expand my window and the oldest datum that I've got is North American datum 1927. It's not sea level, but that's okay. I'll, I'll use this one. So my map is going to be slightly off, but good enough for what it's for. Plenty of latitude for that sort of thing in the world. New York. So we've got 
Central, East, the Long Island, and West. And um, the best fit for me looks like New York East, 1927 State Plain, State Plain, New York East. I'll hit okay. Now our map is given that State Plain projection. I'll zoom roughly to the area where our quad exists. It'll it'll be over here in the Adirondacks. Okay, now I'll turn this on. This is just floating who knows where off in space. Now it's time to georeference. So there's this amazing feature in the imagery tab called georeference. Boom, georeference. Okay, and when I do that, it adds a tab and I can say, I'm gonna start adding control points. So I'll choose add control points. Now I'm gonna zoom to the extent of this image. There it is. Here's something that's pretty cool. Very helpfully, this map has its corner coordinates labeled for me. So 45 degrees 15 minutes north, 74 degrees on the dot west. This is my origin point, and now I set the destination pin on my real life map. I can zoom out to see where in the world I am. Okay, and I wanna be up here, likely. Now, right now, by default, my coordinates read out in decimal degrees. I'm gonna use this as a reference for placing my pin. I'm gonna change this to degrees, minutes, seconds, just like the topographic map has. Now I can see in degrees, minutes, and seconds. So the top left corner is 4415. So I'm gonna look for 4415. Okay, so that's my first corner. And now, hopefully all I need to do is pin my second corner to where it belongs. And because our underlying map is a near enough projected coordinate system to this map, everything within it should line up reasonably well. Here I go, I'm looking for an origin of 44 by 73, 45 minutes. Okay, woo! Let's see what we've got. It's like Christmas. By the way, you can fine tune your zoom by right clicking your mouse and, and just scrolling up and down. And you can pan by click pressing down on your scroll wheel and that'll let you pan around, FYI. Okay, let's see. Uh, let's, try, um, let's try a swipe. Yes, okay. We're good. Now we just save it. And it saves um, projected coordinate system information for this JPEG raster. Isn't that cool? All right, um, now I've added it to the map. Now by default, ArcGIS Pro will take a look at an image and do its best to give you a good looking default view of this map. So let's take a look at what those defaults are. R. We've got a gamma value of 0 0.8. I want to keep it unchanged. So unchanged is just one. The resampling type, uh, right now it's nearest neighbor. That can look a little jaggy. I'm going to go cubic and it'll do some nice pixel dithering so that when I zoom in, it doesn't look as jaggy. And then the stretch type, right now it's doing a percentage clip on the darkest and the lightest values. And they do that in order to boost contrast in the image, which is cool. But I want to keep it pristine. And so I'll just say none. Just show me the raw image as it is. Okay, there it is. A lot softer, but this is what the scan looks like. And so that's what I want to maintain. So I'll go to the georeference tab and close it because we're done. Now we've got a georeferenced vintage topo quad sitting where it belongs. Isn't that cool? Now, if I were to project this into any just bananas projection, this thing would warp and stretch and split and do whatever it needs to do to accommodate that projection spatial life it's now become spatially sentient and i love that check this out living atlas of the world the arc gis living atlas of the world has a glorious treat just waiting for you let me show you what i mean i'll uh, look for usgs and there it is historical topographic map explorer yes please i'll open this this is an app 
that lets me search for any sweet old or new USGS topographic map by place and guess what also by time ready I'll just click the area that I'm interested in and a timeline pops up down here showing me the extent and a little preview of all sorts of USGS topo maps through the years including what our 1902 Mount Marcy check this out I'm gonna zoom in there it is look at this and what it must already be geo-referenced if it knows where to live in the real world download map Here is a version of that map. This one's a little bit more tattered, which frankly is pretty cool. I like that even more to tell you the truth. And even better, it's a geo tiff. Geo tiff, watch this. Here is the map that we laboriously geo referenced, but that was good to learn. And here's our geo tiff. Add it right to the map, right where it needs to be. Isn't that amazing? And I'm gonna do all this stuff. Here we go. Already geo-referenced for us. Check out that resource. And frankly, all the other resources in Living Atlas, it's fantastic. And that does it for part one, where we grab a beautiful vintage topo map and we geo-reference it and give it spatial life in a GIS. Part two, we're going to grab a digital elevation model and we're gonna clip it based on the extents of the map itself and also the whole paper. And in part three, part three is gonna be the fun one. Part three is where we dabble in hillshade and get crazy and have a lot of fun. So I'll see you there for part two and part three.